Welcome to Real Filmmaking. My name is Corey, and I know it's been a minute since my last video on the channel, but I'm back and I'm excited to make more videos and a lot of stuff I've got coming. And today I'm talking about the Canon EOS M, particularly the workflow of post-production with the EOS M. So this video will kind of act as like a third in a series or a trilogy of these videos about the Canon EOS M. The first really being like information about the M and like why you'd want to pick it up if you want to do filmmaking or learn more about cinematography, cinematography tools. The second video is a lot more of the like kind of practical logistics. What do you need to set it up? Like where do you get the software? Like how do you set up your camera? And then I shared a couple of the shooting modes that I would recommend when you're just getting started with the EOS M. And this third video will really be talking about the post-production of like once you shoot a whole bunch of video, like what do you do with it? Because when you shoot video with Magic Lantern, you get these .mlv files and no program can read them. And so you're kind of left with like, oh, I have these really cool files that will look great or people tell me they're gonna look great, but I can't open them in Premiere or Final Cut or Resolve, what do I do? So I'm gonna take you through the workflow and show you how to take those MLV files and make something beautiful with them. So quick disclaimer, there's a lot of different ways to do post-production and then when you talk about Magic Lantern, there's even more ways that you can do it. Um, MLV app is a free app, I'll put a link down in the description where you can find it, but essentially it's kind of like, it's a transcoding and editing software, it's kind of like a mix of Photoshop and Lightroom, but for video footage, and essentially it takes the files that you shot with your EOS M and Magic Lantern and it allows you to turn those into video files. It takes those raw stills and combines them together. And also while you're using MLV app, you can do a lot of editing, you can change color space, you can mess with gamma, like lots of different things, shadows, highlights. But I wanna show you how I use MLV app to convert my files so that way I can open them in a different place. So you'll need MLV app, like I mentioned, and then I personally use DaVinci Resolve when I'm shooting with the EOS M and Magic Lantern. I've used it before with Premiere and I feel like I've ran into some problems, you know, different workflows for different people, but with Resolve, I've had a lot of really good luck using Cinema DNG and I'll show you that like when we get to the whole workflow. And you might say, but I don't have Resolve. Well, Resolve is free. <laughs> Just like MLV app, Resolve is free. You can go over to Blackmagic's website. I'll put a link in the description and you can grab the free version of it. And usually when companies have like a paid version of their software and a free version, you're kind of like, okay, am I missing out on like a lot of the really good stuff? But I can attest to the fact that if you get the free version of DaVinci Resolve, it is a full-fledged editing software. It's like you can edit video, you have full audio control with Fairlight you get the famous DaVinci Resolve color grading suite, you get all of it. And honestly, the paid version of Resolve, which is only 300 bucks, it's like, it only has stuff that, you know, maybe if you are a pro colorist, you're working professional, you're doing all that, it might have some of that stuff you need, but for 90% of what you're gonna be doing here for YouTube or just like small independent stuff, indie short films, all of that sort of stuff, like, the free version of Resolve is more than enough. It will cover you. I've used it for the last like year and a half and I've loved it. I've only recently upgraded to the paid version. So you can go download that. It will be good to go. You'll be ready. And so once you have DaVinci Resolve and MLV app, you can follow along with me and see how I take my MLV files through MLV app into DaVinci Resolve and do some basic color correction to set me up to have some really good looking footage. And so you can follow along and we'll get your footage looking really nice and beautiful. Also, for those of you who don't have an EOS M or maybe you're just interested in Magic Lantern and this whole process, I'm gonna put a link down in the description where you can grab a couple of the clips that I'm using in this video. And you can follow along actually using that footage and see exactly what I'm doing. And you know, who knows, it might pique your interest to say, oh, I really want to take the plunge and get the EOS M and get into the whole Magic Lantern community. We're all waiting for you, so uh, <laughs> the water's fine, come on in. But without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing that you're gonna need is your SD card with all your Magic Lantern files. You can see I have that right here. And then you're gonna need a place to actually store all of the files. Like I mentioned, we are going to be using DaVinci Resolve and we're going to turn these MLV files into Cinema DNG files. So you need a lot of space to store them because it basically 
translate MLV app is going to translate these MLV files into individual stills that it will put together to create a video file. So we need to make sure we have lots of storage. I have an external hard drive here. So you want to make sure that you have a separate folder created to store the DNG files. I've got this workflow video and I'm even going to make another folder in here that says example DNGs. So I have that. So when you open MLV app, this is what you're going to see. Don't get distracted too much by this right hand column over here. It can be pretty overwhelming. Just follow me and MLV app is one of those programs that you learn a little bit each day and before long you come to have a better understanding of what the program can do and how it best works for you. You have all these icons up here and you know you've got your basic ones like open and stuff but the main ones we're going to be using are import. If you hover over them they'll tell you what they are and info. Also, if you go here to file, you can see all of the same icons and they tell you exactly what they do. So we're gonna go to import MLV. I'm gonna click that and then it will look for the MLV files. So it's got my SD card and so I'm just gonna highlight all this stuff. Hit open and then boom, you'll see on the left hand side, it will just start to populate all of my MLV files. All right, so it's finished importing, and we see I've got all my MLV files over here. And for the purposes of this demonstration video, I shot mostly in the 5K FRTP mode for this trip. I just wanted to experiment with it and do stuff. I also shot a couple clips in the normal 1080p mode, so I'll grab a handful, mostly of the 1080p and a couple of the 5K clips, so you can kind of mess around with those and see you know, just some of the differences. So I'm going to go in here. If you double click on a clip, you can scrub through it. You can see everything. Um, if you hit spacebar, it'll play through it. And at first you might be kind of like confused because you're like, why is it so choppy? Like the footage didn't look like that when I was recording it. The EOS M is recording raw video, but it's recording literally stills, raw stills that it's putting together to create video. So MLV app is going to help us turn this into video files that we can work on. But right now it's literally the raw frames that you're seeing. Don't be afraid if you're like, oh, my footage got messed up. Nope, this is all how it's supposed to be. You can see over here on the right side, you have a lot of different options of things that you can do. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there's a lot of different workflows of how people use MLV app. I'm gonna show you the Cinema DNG workflow and so that honestly doesn't involve really anything over here with lots of stuff that you can do. So if you go up to the top, one of the things that I really like is if you click the info, the clip information icon, you can see exactly what all of your information was. Like if it's been a minute since you've looked at your files, so you can see like, oh, a shot with the ESM right here is using the 22 millimeter. It tells you the resolution you were shooting at, the focal length you shot at, shutter speed, all that stuff. And this can be super helpful if you're just clicking through clips and you just want to remember like, okay, what was I doing here? What did I shoot that with? So we're going to get this one of the giraffes right here. This would be a good one. You can see there's a lot of uh, contrast in that. And so it kind of really tests the dynamic range of the M. Some light back here, some dark right here. So you have all your files selected. And you're going to go right here and click export. But before you do that, the first time you open MLV app or if you're working on different projects, you're going to want to go to export settings. It's right next door to it. So when you click it, it's going to say file export. And as you click on that drop down, you're going to see all these different options of codecs that you can export your selected clips in. And so there's a lot of options of what you can do for files and codecs with MLV app. But we're going to click on Cinema DNG Uncompressed. Um, there's a couple even in the Cinema DNG things that you can do, uncompressed, lossless, fast pass. I've used uncompressed. I have really good results with it. You can just leave it default naming scheme. You don't need to deal with any of this stuff. Like if you want to do a frame rate override, you can, but all of my footage I know I record in 24 frames per second. I want the audio with it. If you don't want the audio with it, you can just click that off and you'll just get the frames. So you hit close. So all of my settings are good for export. So I'm going to go over here and actually hit export. It's going to ask me where do I want to export this stuff. And this is where 
the empty folder I was talking about comes in handy. So I'm gonna click here, my hard drive, I'm gonna click my stuff, real filmmaking, MLV workflow video, example DNGs. So we're gonna click through to here, I'm gonna hit open, and it will prepare to export. And this is where I will fast forward. <laughs> All right, so now we're opening DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna create a new project. You go here and just name your project whatever. This will be like MLV demo or test or something like that. And here is Resolve. So you've got your couple panels. You've got your media panel, your cut panel, your edit, your fusion panel. That's where you do like all of your kind of uh, special effects. You've got your color panel. Fairlight, which handles audio, and then you've got your export panel. All right, so most of what we're gonna be doing is happening in media and in the edit. So we're gonna go here, go to our folder that has all of our DNGs. And as you click through it, you can see the files that you're looking at. So we're gonna grab a couple different files here. When you drag it down to the timeline, it will say, do you want to change the project settings? Hit change. It's just going to make it your standard uh, 1080p timeline. Now we've got all of our clips in. So I'm going to grab one of these. So you can scrub through them. You can look at them. So I'm going to grab one of these. We're going to go over to the edit tab. I'm going to pull this clip in here. We're gonna go click on the color tab. This is where the magic happens. I'm gonna go over to the far left icon and I'm going to change the camera raw setting. So hit decode using clip. This will allow DaVinci Resolve to see that you shot raw video. You can mess with different things like the color space and the gamma, but when you're just starting now, I'd recommend Rec 709 and leave it sRGB for the gamma. So now you can mess with stuff and you can see as I do stuff here like raise the exposure and you can see the waveform at the bottom right. You can see that changing. It actually affects your footage in real time you can see in the viewer above us. And so if I want to lower the exposure or if I want to lift the whole um, waveform I can. And so this chart is very helpful in seeing like where different things are spatially in the image. So, you know, where are your highlights, where are your shadows, where is most of the image sitting in the color space. DaVinci Resolve is a very powerful tool. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but for just basic, just getting started, what I usually do is if it's a dark scene, you know, I'll bump the exposure up some, I'll drop the lift so just my blacks look pretty close to black. I will sometimes boost the saturation, give it a little color, um, maybe adjust the contrast. But for the most part, I really like how the M looks. I like those Canon colors, and that's honestly what you're getting. And so just a little bit of tweaking and color correction puts your image in a really good looking space. If you want to go further and do more like substantial color grades and stuff, you can. Just out of the box, the Canon colors of the M look really great. Uh, you can mess with the gamma and the gain. That affects just the different intensity at different parts of the waveform. So if you want to raise or lower that. And those are just the basics. It's doing like a, a basic color correction, getting the footage to look good straight out of camera. Okay, I'm going to show one more clip. I'm going to pull in this clip of the giraffes and mess with that because like I mentioned earlier, it was a good high contrast clip to just test the dynamic range of the M, some shadow and some light stuff going on. And jump over to the color space, make sure to set it to clip. All right, I'm gonna mess with the exposure a little bit, pump it up, pull the shadows up a little bit. Let's do a little bit of tweaking overall Boost a little bit of saturation, just get some color in there, a little bit of color boost. And I'm thinking overall that it's looking pretty good. You can see it with the grade, without the grade, well actually without the color correction. I'm going to push the shadows up a little bit more. I 
And one thing I've noticed in this footage is that it's a little shaky. I think I shot this with the 22 millimeter. So I'm gonna go down here to stabilization and stabilize. DaVinci Resolve has a fantastic stabilizer. I think it's hands down better <laughs> than Warp Stabilizer in Premiere. I can't speak to Final Cut because it's been so long since I've used Final Cut, but I've been very happy with DaVinci and how it does stabilization. And if you shoot with a fairly wide lens or a fairly stabilized lens, you tend to get really good shots. It's like the stabilization works really well in tandem with those lenses. So lastly, I want to show you how to deal with the 5K FRTP footage. When you pull it into your editor, it looks almost like vertical phone video. But what you need to do is go to Retime and Scaling, click Scaling, and hit Stretch. And so now your image looks normal. So what's going on when you shoot in the 5K mode, like the simplest way to understand it, is you're shooting in an anamorphic mode. This helps to alleviate aliasing and moray. But because you're shooting in an anamorphic mode, the aspect ratio looks really different and wrong when you pull it into your editor. So you just have to make sure to stretch it out and then everything looks great. Again, all the same stuff in regards to color correction applies here. Make sure that you go to camera raw, set it to clip, set the gamma, all that stuff correctly. And you can do everything we have just been talking about. If you're going for that cinematic look and you want to have the black bars on your footage, you can go over to the effects and grab an adjustment clip, stretch it out over all of your footage once you're done grading it. And you will want to go over to the top where it says cropping on the adjustment clip and make sure to crop the top and the bottom to as much as you like. Um, in different Magic Lantern modes, like if you're shooting 2, 3, 5 to 1 already, the footage will have the cropped aspect ratio to make it look, you know, the, the cinema style of that. But if you shot in 1080p mode and you want to add it later, this is a really easy, quick way to do that. When you are all satisfied with your movie, you like how it looks, click on the Deliver tab. And then you can name your file, whatever you want to call it. Then choose the location where you want it to go. You know, whether it's your desktop or your external hard drive or whatever, just choose. And then all these settings should be good from your project. Hit add to render queue, then hit render all, and Resolve will begin to render out your video. Well, there it is. We took some MLV footage through MLV app, Cinema DNG into DaVinci Resolve, and we have some beautiful looking footage shot from the EOS M and Magic Lantern. I really love this camera. The more and more I shoot with it, it's just like, I can't believe the quality that you can get out of this small camera body and how much you can push around the colors and do grades and DaVinci Resolve with it. And yeah, I love this camera. I really don't foresee myself selling it. Um, I bring it as a second on most of my shoots that I do now. And just for like a little pocketable camera, especially if I put something like the EFM 22 millimeter on here, I can, it's just, it's like, I can literally put it in my pocket. Well, it won't fit in this pocket. It, <laughs> I hope you found this video helpful. Um, again, like I said, if you want to grab the footage that I use in this video, it'll be down in the description. And until next time, keep making movies and watching movies, and I'll see you on Real Filmmaking.